Hello, welcome to a new video. High water chargers are all over the market these days. Are they legit or are they just garbage and promoting things they can never really do? Well, it's time to check. This 300 watt charger, it's compact, has a screen, and on paper looks amazing. Lots of watts and lots of ports. Enough power to get through damn near anything. You know what's coming, right? I knew before I even got it, but I'm gonna make you wait. You could just hit skip, I guess. Damn, thwarted again. So let's look at some comparisons when I search for a 300 watt USB charger. It looks like there are heaps of these things in all kinds of form factors. Overall, it looks like wattage is solved. All of these 300, 400, and 480 watt chargers, they must all be legit and perfect pieces of equipment. There's absolutely no chance any of them will overheat or have any issues, right? I'm sure they're all absolute peak performance devices and no one can compete with them. I may be lying a little bit. Okay, today is a 300 watt USB power adapter. It has no branding anywhere on the box. Doesn't have anything on the adapter itself. It is, for all intents and purposes, generic. So it's every brand everywhere. It's the ultimate any adapter for on the go. On paper, this 300 watt adapter looks good. Again, it's got watts, a display, and all the modes of operation. It's a very compact design, it's very lightweight for the power level, and it has international clip-on plugs, you can use it anywhere. Let's just go to that part now. This adapter and the adapters that come with it have a major issue. They are really not safe. I mean, like this shouldn't be for sale level of unsafe. I don't know who is the original OEM of this thing, but they should stop making it. So a normal adapter that comes with these is already reducing safety, but at least if you plug the adapter in, you can't grab the AC pins. They are shrouded. Is it good? No, but this one is far worse. You can plug it in and the pins are completely exposed. The mains are on metal pins on the outside of the adapter and anyone can grab them. Are you supposed to do this? No, but you can. The adapters fit the wrong way on the USB power supply, again, this leaves the mains AC pins exposed, so this is a major fail. The other adapters don't even let you install them the wrong way. This is an egregious failure of even trying to do something. Like 101, don't expose the mains pins anyone can touch. Okay, let's move on to the adapter itself. It does work. It basically meets the essential claims it has on the box. Is it gonna last? No, it's not. It isn't that expensive, but for the watts, it is very inexpensive. The modes and functions seem good. The idle power consumption is poor. It uses too much. The efficiency, of course, is nowhere near class leading, and this also means something. Not yet. More stuff to check out first. The user manual for this device lacks the infographics I like to see, but it does give a little bit of a better table of the power distribution for this device. I wasn't quite able to get some of these to work, but the 3x100 watt did work. It seems like two devices will not renegotiate, but as soon as you add in a third device, this does cause all ports to go to zero and then figure out what they're supposed to be doing. This can cause some delayed resets as well, but once it's all figured out, they stay on. It claims it's thermally stable all the way to 60 degrees C operating temperature. I mean, really? You ever see the movie The Big Short? Steve Carell gets up. There's a 0% chance, zero. The adapter does have a PPS mode. It is 11 volts and it can go to five amps, no problem. So this should have no issue with Samsung devices for a short period of time. Okay, time to check out the isolation on this device. Is it good in terms of keeping the AC mains on one side and the DC voltage for your device on the other side? This is important because one side is lethal and the other side is safe. This device does reasonably well here offering low enough worst case leakage current that users should not have a problem with a tingling feeling you get from some adapters. Will it last? Because of the next problem, not sure. Well, again, the hint was already on screen a while back, but here it is with a little more detail. This adapter is too low for energy efficiency for the power level. Across the board, too much power at idle, and then it just never gets good enough to be able to get the heat out of the box. And this is a trade-off of the form factor. There is some good news here. The DC voltage was very stable, accurate, and the ripple was acceptable. In terms of the output voltage, this is an okay charger. In terms of its AC to DC performance though, again, its primary job being a power supply, it is poor. Just a quick note on the screen for this adapter. It is fine. It's small, but readable, and accuracy was not perfect by any means, but it gave a reasonable representation of what was going on until it got hot. 
then it's nowhere near what it claims. The low efficiency does only lead to one thing, thermal performance. It says it can operate up to 60 degrees Celsius environments, which, let me tell you, my lab is cold. 15 degrees C. This power adapter has to get quite a lot of heat out from a relatively small and lightweight case. Again, this is a recipe for disaster. After a couple of minutes, it's already starting to get warm. My guess is 20 minutes. I don't think it's going to get much more than that. And yep, this lasted a grand total of 20 minutes. Low efficiency means heat. This means don't expect it to work well if you want to get anywhere near its rated watts. Forget using the rated temperature range. It gets less efficient as it gets warmer too, so it starts to thermally run away. This also means it's getting even hotter on the inside. This is a complete fail. Okay, let's compare this to some of the other offerings on the market. The main competitor is the Ugreen 300 watt charger because it's the only direct comparison I can find that I've tested. The Anker 240 watt is close, of course, so in looking at the date, I will compare with that. But in terms of, an, of a size and a weight comparison, the weight of the generic 300 watt adapter is tiny. The Ugreen is a heavy, big adapter. The size comparison is also no contest. The Ugreen is at least twice the size. That adapter still has issues with overheating, so this adapter really never stood a chance. When looking at the idle graph for this adapter, it's not good. I am giving it every chance here, with no cables, of course, and it's not even close. The Ugreen is borderline, but this makes that look good. So in terms of the better performers like the Apple 140 watt and the Anker 240 watt adapter, this is not where it should be. Yes, the cost at one watt even is pretty small, but if every phone charger used one watt at idle, we'd need more power plants. When looking at the average performance efficiency of all these adapters, this one comes out on the bottom. For a high power adapter, the efficiency becomes very important to make sure that not too much heat is generated in the first place. This fails here because the efficiency is low and therefore it generates a lot of heat. Adapters should be getting more efficient at these power levels, so not sure exactly what's going on inside of this one, but it's not the one for me. Conclusion time. This charger does get to 300 watts. It essentially meets its claims by not really having any claims. So marketing wise, it's kind of what it says it is. If you look online, it says it weighs like 280 grams. The user manual says something else. 400 plus is more realistic, which for the power level and efficiency is not realistic. This is more like a 140 watt power adapter. It's still nowhere near the most efficient at that point, but it should be able to stay on at least. It will still turn into a hot potato, but there's no real avoiding that with this one. The idle power consumption is bad. Bad enough to not be worth it. Just a cable and it jumps up to 1.6 watts. The adapters that come with this will kill someone. You can plug them in and literally hold on to the AC pins. Direct connection. An RCD won't protect you when you have both pins. This can easily kill someone and there is no protection to stop you from doing it. Okay, so on that positive note, here are the positives. It meets the power levels and the voltages on the box. It has a PPS mode, 11 volts, full 5 amps, so if you don't die trying to get it plugged in, it will work just fine. The ripple voltage and voltage stability were all within reason. The safety check on it came out okay, so the transformer and the capacitors appear okay. I didn't push the limits on them, and they really need to be pushed for a full evaluation, but it shouldn't cause much tingle factor. Doesn't mean it's safe or good though. Remember, risk management and this one is high risk. It overheats bad. Claims operation up to 60 degrees C. Nope, this is bogus hogwash. It has the least safe AC clip-on adapters I've seen. They work, but they leave exposed AC mains in so many situations. Like why? Even an all-American 5 tube radio is more safe than this. I'm gonna stick with my Anker 240 watt adapter. Is it perfect? No but it has better efficiency, it has lower idle power usage, and it can hold up to the watts that it claims. Is it heavy? Does it have a captive cable? Yes. Is there an all USB-C port version? Yes. So yeah, there are options. It did come up on the first page of Amazon when searching for 300 watt adapters, so at least it should enter the thought of anyone looking for a high wattage adapter. There is a full review of that on the channel as well as the newer ones, and of course thermals and a little capacitor analysis section that you should definitely check out about how a lot of these aren't going to last anyway, including this 300 watt job. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description, but not to this thing. Goodbye.